Welcome to the Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show. This program is sponsored by Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company. Hello and welcome to Fresno FC Match Day, the Fox's official pregame show. I'm Nick King. Los Zorros coming off two 1-0 losses that came four days apart, both at altitude. Saturday was at Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC. Tuesday, it was at Real Monarchs SLC. That game in Salt Lake, we had some issues with the USL video feed, so the highlights here are a little limited, but you'll see the Real Monarchs SLC goal that's in the eighth minute, and at the end, you'll see a play involving Alex Cooper that came just before the final whistle, and it had Adam Smith furious there was no penalty. Here's a look now at the key moments. Joseph Dickerson, center referee for tonight's match, blows his whistle and we are underway here at Zions Bank Stadium. Brody will cut in, looking forward to Hoffman. He gets the return pass, Brody inside the 18. Brody shot and a goal! Andrew Brody puts the Monarchs ahead in the eighth minute of play. The Skeletor strikes. What an unbelievable play by Andrew Brody. Gets the ball out of the wing, he gets switched to the left. He's entering a game in a situation like that. Shot and a good opportunity for Johnson. Pings the crossbar and goes up and over. Some, but it's, some things more handsy go. Ball forward, oh. Farrow comes out, takes a punch. Renato still down on the ground, shot just wide. Hernandez, Hernandez has the overlapping run. He'll take it himself, shot, parried away, still inside the 18 and no one's home. It's Hoffman inside the 18, Hoffman, shot. Takes it a flexion wide. Great ball in. Renato, shot and a save by Connor Sparrow. As much as you possibly can. Blake, shot! Parried away by Rainish. One of the corners to try and kill this clock. Brody for Cooper inside. Cooper, shot! And a save by the keeper. Sparrow, ball still inside the 18. Monarchs try. A new feature now, the stop of the week. No replay angles on this guy, but Fox's keeper Kyle Rainish had a real nice save Tuesday evening. Hernandez has the overlapping run. He'll take it himself, shot, parried away, still inside the 18, and no one's home. The overlapping run, he'll take it himself, shot, parried away, still inside the 18. Now Sacramento looking to push it forward. Kawasa comes back for it from Paul Matiasic to his right. Goes inside, being held, could be a foul shot on goal, it's in! Cameron Kawasa with number six on the year! Oh my god, Cameron Kawasa made that look so easy. 27th minute. Van Avick. Off the crossbar and in, and it's 1-0. Reno, 1868. Attacking spot in the center of the field. Here's another overlapping run. It's Reed again who's on the move. Reed inside the 18, left-footed strike, and it's a hat trick for number 30 for Ottawa. And it says it's a free kick for the Swill Park Rangers. Take it short. Sonovic on his left! Seth Sonovic! One from the left, one from the right, one right down the middle. Here comes Malcolm, takes a shot, and he scores! Shane Malcolm off the free kick! Now it's going to be Bajam and an out sprawl. Gomez comes up with a big save. Great job. Back across, going to be 2 1. Tempakis gets down. Oh, well, that was almost a five hole goal right there. Speedy Williams, nifty little move. He'll take a shot. Tempakis will swat it away. Enter now, hot in the space. Deflected strike. That's a fantastic save. This is how Angel Alvarez. Will continue to earn more playing time. That ball is bending in. This is played back across for White. Saved by Crapo, and then White on the second shot puts it over the bar. Before that, the header wide and a brilliant save from Serta. Right place, right time.
Reminder, we want to make your fandom of Fresno FC a part of this show. We're searching social media for those hashtags. Somos Zoros, Built for Fresno, and We Are Foxes. We're using these kinds of pictures and videos heading into each commercial break. The Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show will be right back after these short messages. Welcome back to the Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show. This program is sponsored by Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company. Okay, we've got another one of the Foxes here. We got Bradley Camden Feo. Bradley, you grew up in France and Canada, and France and Canada. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about your childhood and your earliest soccer memories? My childhood, yeah, we moved between France and Canada a couple of times. And uh, I've always played soccer since I remember anything that's. I've always wanted to play, so at recess or like with my dad or even my mom, I try to get my mom in the goal, shoot on her, like any chance I had, I would try to play, so, so yeah. Why do you think you love it so much? I don't know, I get this feeling, you know, when I, when we win a game or score a goal or something that you want to try, it pulls out, it comes off, you can't describe it, there's just this feeling that only comes from playing soccer, that's, I guess that's what I'm after, just only that feeling, you know? That's one of the best feeling ever. And you, so you were in Canada and then you went to college here in the States, yeah. went to UNLV, right? Yeah. What led to that decision? How did you get to the States? Uh, actually, my first year I went to a NIA school in Indiana. Then uh, I wanted more of a challenge, so I transferred to, to UNLV just to play at a higher level, the Division One, And then I ended up working good because we won conference, we went to nationals, so yeah, I don't regret the decision at all. So it was a very good three years. Have you enjoyed staying in the United States and playing here? Yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's, it's very, very different, almost like opposite sometimes to France, but so far it's been good. I've met a lot of good people. I've traveled a lot, so it's been a good experience. Can you explain what some of those differences are between France and the United States? The first is the food. Oh. <laughs> It's so much better <laughs> in France. Yeah, and uh, like there's more like like fashion, uh, food, because I really like like art and fashion. So there's more on that there. <laughs> so if we're if we're going out to eat then in France, or someone's making a nice meal in France, what's your favorite? What are you craving? First thing for sure, I eat the bread, bread, oil, some spices. Then me, I really like pizza, so I get myself a pizza, thin crust, in the oven, a little dessert, maybe coffee, I'm good. <laughs> Pretty simple. As you've traveled throughout the, the U.S. here, is there a favorite place you've, you've visited or seen? What I like to go best is Vegas, to be honest, because that's where I went to school, like, all my good friends are there, my best friends there, so, and they have a sushi buffet, so... <laughs> I guess it would be Vegas. Not for the drinking, but... Just the sushi buffet. Yeah, yeah, the buffet and my friends. You guys have players on this team from all around the world. Yeah. Who do you like talking to the most? Who do you think has kind of a, a really interesting backstory or life story? Wow, there's a lot. Obviously, Kafa is from Argentina. I lived in Spain. We have the old guys like JJ is from England. I have my friend Zach here. He's from Canada. So like, and we have common friends as well. So, you know, we have a bunch of people, like we have my roommate uh, Raheem, he's from Ghana, like anytime you talk to people, they have different stories and it's cool because we're all from even Mexico, you know, we have so many different backgrounds and we have different ways of thinking of stuff, different ways of uh, seeing stuff and it's very, it's very, very cool, you know, you learn, I learned a lot just from my teammates. What would you say is one thing that you've learned that's really stuck with you? The one thing, I mean, even like in, in situations, you know, like how they interpret situations and like maybe when I grew up, I, I saw it this way and like, oh, I think this is right. And then I listen to the perspective and how their, for example, their culture sees it and it's completely different. And I'm, oh, it makes sense, you know, and it's so stuff like that. Obviously the food, I like food, so try a different food <laughs> and stuff like that. 
if you're not playing soccer and you're not eating food, is there anything, what else <laughs> are you interested in, are you passionate about? I read a lot of books, uh, like autobiographies, that's the word in English? Yeah, autobiographies on people like, that, I, that I respect and I aspire to come kind of close like, you know? Uh, so I read books, I go on walks, I like to walk a lot, shopping, or check out like some, my clothes, you know, on the fashion websites and stuff like this. So, and I call home a lot also, I'm, all, I'm on the phone a lot. <laughs> I, yeah, I call home a lot, so <laughs> those are things, <laughs> not too crazy. What are your three favorite autobiographies you've read? Or your very favorite? Zizi Drogba is, for me, one of the best ones I've read because like a lot of his stories I could uh, relate to. Rio Ferdinand as well is very good. Uh, I read Zlatan's that I, re I liked a lot as well. Uh, that was very nice. What else have I read? Vardy's was... I wouldn't say I could relate so much to Vardy. I mean, but I think it was very inspiring the way how you just pulled through, you know, he came from solo and he went so high. So I think that was very inspiring. Uh, I read Ferguson's as well. It was not as in, didn't, I wouldn't say if it inspired me, but it was, I learned a lot. And you know, when you see players at that stage, you want to be, you want to know what they do different. You want to know what, you want to learn from them. So that was, I learned a lot from Ferguson's biography when he talked about the, the top players. So that was good. We would like to make you, the community, a big part of this show as well by sharing your social media posts from the matches and the hoopla before and after the matches. The Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show will be right back after these short messages. Welcome back to the Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show. This program is sponsored by Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company. Okay, joined now by Fox's head coach, Adam Smith. Adam, we didn't really get to see much of Tuesday's game in Salt Lake with the league's video feed not quite working. Can you tell us, can you give us an idea of how that went? Yeah, obviously the, re the result's disappointing. We've lost, but we always knew it was going to be hard going into Salt Lake at altitude. Conditions were very, very hot and on the turf it was an extra 10 degrees, on, you know, but it's the same for both teams. And... Uh, but they're top of the league and they're flying and, and we knew it was going to be tough also after playing on Saturday and, and they didn't have a game on, on the Saturday so they were a lot fresher than we were. Um, but I was actually pleased uh, with how we, how we applied ourselves. Um, very disappointed with the goal that we conceded. It was a very poor goal and we've addressed that with the group today in, in our video session. Um, but, you know, take that out of it. Um, Kyle had a few few saves to make during the game and did very well but their goalkeeper had saves to make as well and um, we had some chances early on um, that we didn't execute and uh, we had chances uh, in, in the second half as well we actually came out you know in, in, in good spirits in the second half and on the ball we did a good job it was off the ball we, we, we needed to be better but um, with the ball we did we did quite well we had a an absolute blatant penalty decision that wasn't given at the very end Alex Cooper was rugby tackled by the goalkeeper and I don't know how the referees have missed it but that's going to happen unfortunately it's the, the sad side of things there's no VAR at, at our level otherwise we'd have come away with a with a 1-1 draw if they, we'd have had the VAR so uh, Saturday's game at Colorado Springs was also one nothing that one maybe a little bit different that one you probably felt like, especially with chances early, that you guys should have been in the lead most of that game. Yeah, that's probably the most frustrated I've been all season, if I'm honest. Even looking back at, you know, we played, the last time we played Sacramento, my old team, the, the, the games where we've conceded late goals and, you know, all those things that have happened, games where teams have been down to 10 men and we haven't been able to sort of capitalise. Out of all of those games, Saturday was the most frustrating and I let the players know that um, because... We, we, the game should have been over at half time. Uh, I didn't fear Colorado. Um, I think they feared us more than, than, than my players um, were worried about playing them. The only thing we, we, we were concerned about was again the travel and the conditions with the altitude and everything. But you know, it's always difficult um, when you're not used to training in those conditions. 
but we applied ourselves fantastically well and um, should have been 2-0 at half time with, without a doubt and even in the second half we missed a couple of very easy chances and that should have wrapped the game up and uh, it should have been a 3-0 game and we'd have been going into Salt Lake you know with, with more confidence and um, uh, you know we, we would look at the road trip and if we'd have got three points out of it we'd be we'd be extremely happy but we, we didn't and so that's why I'm frustrated and we have to do better when we, we get gifted opportunities like we did and, and not capitalize on them. So it's, it's really disappointing that game. Uh, can't change it now, can't do anything about it other than try and put it right on Saturday. You mentioned Sacramento, your, mm -hmm. old, your old club, and that's who comes to town again uh, Saturday. How do you, when it's, when it's a new franchise as you guys are, and the proximity makes this what should be a rivalry game, mm -hmm. does it feel that way? How do you kind of generate a rivalry that doesn't exist before? Yeah, I mean, it is a rivalry, um, and I'm sure it will grow more and more. Uh, it, to me, it's just another game. Um, and it wouldn't matter really who we were playing on Saturday, we'd need to pick up the points. I mean, mm -hmm. end of story, we have to. Um, but I think, you know, I think we were too nice when Sacramento came into town last time. Uh, the game was, you know, was just was kind of a nothing game and it could have been 1-1, 0-0 or 1-0 to us and, or 1-0 to them and it ended up being 1-0 to them, you know, they took their chance. So, um, but we were too nice, we, we, we weren't aggressive enough in our play and this is our home, you know, this, is, this is, should be a fortress and anybody stepping foot in here should be, should be quaking in their boots when they, when they walk out that tunnel. And that's the environment we've got to create and that's the message that I've given to the players this week. Um, I know they're tired, but I've just told them I don't care how tired you are, you've got to go out and you've got to get on the front foot and you've got to, got to take the game to Sacramento and try and score early. We, we scored early. We scored first, I think, in, in the eight games that we've, we've scored first. I, I think the stats are we've won four of them, tied four of them, so we haven't lost. So, you know, when you don't score first, you give yourself a mountain to climb. So, and I don't want to do that. So we're going to get on the front foot and we're going we're, we're gonna to go at them. World Cup update. <laughs> now that we are past the group stage, is there a, is there a club, is there a team that's really impressed you? Uh, how do you see the, the knockout stage play it out? I, 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 impressed and surprised is England. I mean, I know that <laughs> yesterday's game they, they lost, but I, it was, it's actually done them a favour with the way the groups have, have panned out and they made eight changes. So, you know, I don't, I, I don't think they were overly worried about yesterday's result. They just wanted to compete. It's nice to keep some momentum going though, but the way they've come out in both, both the other uh, group games, in the first half, the way they've uh, applied themselves and come out the blocks is probably the most exciting I've seen any England team in, in a long, long time. So, um, so I'm pleased and it's nice to see Germany bow out. I, I would like to have seen Argentina go and France and all these big teams, you know, big countries go out as well and, you know, with some surprise exit, but you can't have, you can't have everything. Um, but I'm, you know, proud with, with the English team at the moment. I got, we got our faces painted yesterday and went down the pub and watched the game and uh, cheered them on. So hopefully we'll be able to have a few more games like that this World Cup. You're doing that here in Fresno? Yeah, with the family. We, we got in the spirit of things. We got My son got his full England kit on and my daughter had an England t-shirt on and, and got their faces painted with little crosses of St. George's on their face and we, we got into the spirit of things. The Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show will be right back after these short messages. Welcome back to the Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show. This program is sponsored by Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company. Western Conference standings looking about the same. Real Monarchs SLC way out in front with the 37 points. Tonight's opponent, Sacramento Republic FC, in third, but coming off a draw and a loss. Fresno FC still holding down 11th with 19 points, four points back of eighth place, and three clear of 12th. Upcoming schedule, tonight's game, the first of four straight here on CW59. Note, next Sunday at Portland Timbers 2, 
That's at 2 in the afternoon. Then home Saturday the 14th against Phoenix Rising FC before 11 days off, followed by a pair of road games in Oklahoma at OKC Energy FC and at Tulsa Roughnecks FC. And that is our show. Thanks for watching and enjoy tonight's game, Highway 99 Derby Part 2. Fresno FC looking to come out on the right side against Sacramento Republic FC this time around. Have I ever told you the legend of Los Zorros? It is a legend, not of size or strength, of fury or fire, but one of speed. Cunning and of sheer will. Born to thrive, fearless in battle, always quicker, always smarter, always winning. So tell me. You have what it takes to become 